I want to talk for a moment about something else in healthcare. Uh, ancient cultures, Mr. President, have been using plant extracts and other mixtures with antimicrobial properties to aid in healing for more than 2,000 years. We're probably most familiar as Americans with the Scottish scientist, I believe Scottish, Alexander Fleming, who developed penicillin, which became a very common drug used kind of from the 1940s on. Well, last week, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention called antimicrobial resistance one of our most serious health threats. Antibiotics and other antimicrobials have been, in essence, a victim of their own success. We use these drugs so widely for so long and sometimes not always wisely and sometimes indiscriminately that the microbes they are designed to kill have adapted to them, making the drugs less effective or in some cases totally ineffective. I stand before you today to remind you of the need for a comprehensive strategy to address micro microbial resistance. Each year, about 2 million Americans contract bacterial infections in hospitals. 20,000 of these people die because the microbes causing their infections are resistant to frequently used antibiotics. One of the most commonly reported antimicrobial resistant infections, something called MRSA, M-R-S-A, an acronym for methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus. MRSA is a strain of staph infection resistant to penicillin and resistant to other related antibiotics. Once thought to be contracted solely in hospital settings by older patients, MRSA is now affecting young, healthy people in our schools and communities. Within the last few years, we've heard far too many media reports of high school and college-age students losing their lives to these infections. And the statistics continue to be troublesome. A recent study from the University of Chicago re revealed that most people are checking into hospitals more people are checking into hospitals with MRSA than those with HIV or influenza combined. We can't ignore that. Molly Brudnick of Shaker Heights, a Cleveland suburb, contracted MRSA after back surgery. She should have been concentrating on recuperating from her surgery. Instead, she spent six weeks in IV antibiotics in a nursing home. She had to complete three months of rehabilitation with nursing care to tend her wounds. Molly's story is far too common in my state and the presiding officer's state of Connecticut and across the country. It doesn't have to happen. Is this epidemic, if you call it that, continues to spread, the financial cost and the loss of life will continue to rise. 2012 study at Columbia found that each drug-resistant infection costs $15,000 more to treat than other infections which are not antimicrobial resistant. That's unacceptable. Curing MRSA is just one piece of the puzzle in eradicating the superbugs that are resistant to antibiotics. In response to this health crisis, I joined the CDC to, to urge enhanced attention and resources devoted to antimicrobial resistance. 2008, I, along with Senator Hatch, senior senator from Utah, introduced the STAR Act, Strategies to Address Antimicrobial Resistance. I thank Senator Hatch on, for his leadership on this as we begin to see the epi epidemic of antimicrobial resistance develop. The STAR Act is a multi-pronged multi approach to revitalize efforts to combat superbugs and prevent outbreaks of MRSA and other dangerous drug-resistant infections. The STAR Act established a government task force to direct efforts to combat microbial resistance. The bill provides for more research on drug-resistant bacteria and explore strategies to ensure the development of new anti-infective drugs. It ensures that antimicrobial drugs will be more wisely used and prescribed and used more wisely and judiciously and prescribed more wisely. We've made far too many advances in modern medicine to lose the fight against microbes. I look forward to working on measures to preserve our existing arsenal of antibiotics and other antimicrobial drugs and to ensure that new drugs are developed which can effectively uh, fight superbugs. I plan to reintroduce the START Act soon and will work with my colleagues to see it move to passage.